For a first example, let's look at balancing chemical reactions, something that you might remember doing back in chemistry class in, in kind of an ad hoc manner. Let's say that you're given a chemical reaction. I don't know, C5H8 plus O2 goes to CO2 plus H2O. I don't know, some, some kind of combustion, whatever. Anyhow, what we need to do is put numbers in front of each of these molecules in order to make the number of atoms balance out. Let's call those unknown coefficients, A1, A2, A3, A4 for the different amounts. And then what we do is atom by atom, we balance the left-hand side with the right-hand side. So if we take the hydrogen atoms, on the left we have 8 times A1, and on the right we have 2 times A4, and to balance we need to set those equal to each other. We could do the same for carbon. For carbon, we get 5 times A1 equals 1 times A3. And then for oxygen, we wind up getting 2 times A2 equals 2 times A3 plus 1 times A4. So that's it. We now have three equations for four unknowns. What we're going to do is convert that into a single equation. We're going to rip out all those coefficients after moving everything from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, pull out the variables a1, a2, a3, a4, pack that into a single vector x, and then on the right-hand side we have our constant vector b, which is 0, 0, 0. Now you could solve this system. You could solve it many different ways. There's no unique solution, which kind of makes sense, right? I mean, if you have something that balances and you double the amounts of inputs, you double the amounts of outputs. Okay, so that makes sense. That's one example from chemistry.